So what was that moment like looking in the mirror the day you decide, okay, wait, enough is enough? Well, it was pretty crazy for me. It, um, it, it took a while to get to that point where enough was enough. Um, what happened, I, I came home one night from work spraying for cockroaches. And um, long story short, I turned on the, the um, Discovery Channel. I saw some guys going through Navy SEAL training. And they were going through Hell Week and they were getting their ass just beat. You know, in and out of the water, guys ringing the bell. Um, they were just suffering. And I was weighing like 297 pounds. And I had to make a change in my life. No one was helping me out. So my mom, my dad made my mom kind of irregular. So she worked three jobs, went to college full time, so she was never around. One time this, this person drew a picture of me and you know, said, we're gonna kill you nigger on my Spanish notebook. Jesus. And I took it to my principal. And my principal said, they spelled nigger Niger. That was the best advice he can give me. So long story short, what I realized was no one was here to help me. Mm. And the feeling I had every morning, I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old. And the feeling I had every morning when I looked in the mirror was horrible. And I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And how I felt was a, a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared. And most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. No one looked at me and said, like, this day and age, they'll, they'll take you in and they'll tell everybody, stop picking on this person. I had to figure out I wasn't going to be a punk kid all my life. So the only way I could turn it around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. So I broke the Ginsburg Royals record for pull-ups a long time ago, but I failed at it twice. And I did 67,000 pull-ups <laughs> in trying to break this record. So to do 4,030 pull-ups, I had to do 67,000 for training for that. Wow. And so what I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being, having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn it around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that would be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind right. through pain and suffering. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that says, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives, but we never read that book. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer, to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it and some people won't. But they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old and they have great lives and they have great kids. Their kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey. It may suck, but it will. It will come out the other side where you're coasting. I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. Right. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what, for me to fix this, 
I get to read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh, no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we're running from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. I go on to want to raise money for families. All these guys died, they all had kids. I want to raise money for the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. It's a foundation where 100% tuition goes to these kids to go to college, you know, full tuition, whatever. So I found this great foundation. I'm gonna raise money for it. So I say, you know what? I have to Google something that's, that's evil, something very hard. I knew nothing about ultra marathons. I hadn't even run a marathon. I knew nothing about this world. So I Googled the, you know, the top 10 hardest races in the world. And what comes up is a bad water 135. It's a 135 mile race through Death Valley in the summertime. So I called Chris Costman up on a Wednesday. He says, look man, the only way you can qualify for my race is to run 100 miles at one time in 24 hours or less. There happened to be a race that Saturday, so four days later. And he said, if you qualify by running 100 miles or less in 24 hours, I will consider you my race. Um, I got to mile 70, and I cleared 70 miles in like 12, 13 hours pretty quickly. But I was done. My feet were broken. I was stretch fractures, shin splints, muscles were tearing. I was in bad shape. So... I sat down at mile 70, and at this time I was married, and I, I look at my wife and I was like, um, I'm, I'm messed up bad. So I literally start to turn white. Here I am, I'm all fucked up in this chair. I'm at mile 70, they got 30 fucking miles to go, I'm jacked up. I gotta go to the bathroom, and the, and the bathroom's like 20 feet from me, it's a porta potty. I can't get out of the fucking chair. So I'm peeing blood down my leg. Whoa pooping up my fucking back, and I got 30 miles to go. And I'm, I can't stand up because my, my blood pressure's all messed up. I've been in three hell weeks, ranger school, overcome so many obstacles in my life. This last 30 miles of this race is when I realized a human being is not so human anymore. We have the ability to go in such a space, if you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. And this 30 miles was the life-changing moment. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles into small pieces. I was so driven. And I'm not, not going to say motivated because motivation is crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. So I sat in this chair and I was so driven to succeed in this race. And, it, and at this time, everybody goes, were you thinking about the guys that died? And I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against the kids that called me nigger, me against me. It, it, it just became something that I took so, so violently personal. And I broke this thing down into small pieces. I said, okay, I gotta get nutrition. I gotta be able to stand up before I can get off this curb and get off this chair and be able to go 30 miles. So I went through all these small steps and I, I was able to stand up. And then from standing up, I was literally walking around with my wife at the time and she goes, you're not gonna make the time. She goes, you're running, I mean, you're, you're walking like 30 some minute miles. I got to mile 81. And the second she said that I'm not gonna make the time, I ran the last 19 miles, nonstop. 
And people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy, he's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. Mm. That's all it is. If you can, for the rest of your life, live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whoever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing, and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not going to find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you got to be quiet. Shut the fuck up. Go in a room. Stop talking. Search your soul. Search your mind. Search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you got to go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? Even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. It's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you went, you went three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died because it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. Self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You got to be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, right. it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not going to stop. And that's, I took all the negative things. I need to go to the hospital, this and that. And I use it all. Who the hell could even get on that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. I'm the happiest man on the planet Earth. So people may take this, and as so many people do, we live in a very weakened society. So when they hear a throwback guy like me from back in the ancient days of, <laughs> of Garanimals, they often think this guy is just whatever. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. My name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of him. You want to break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through buds, my job, what drove me was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face I wanted you to feel worse than I did, and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids and a, a nice meal, and I was still out there in the grip, suffering for another 100 hours. 
I want you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable. And I want you to think about when you went through fucking hell week, how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt. I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what, yeah, I went through Hell Week, and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no, that motherfucker takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to fucking start. It, it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Oh God, I love that. We so tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay, trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day, it's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word, it's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, You've done it. The, the younger generation quits. Not everybody. So I got I to put that. People get their butt hurt. So not everybody. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong. You did this wrong. Or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, that's life, man. That, and and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, it, one plus one is two. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people don't understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. That's a very scary situation when you are on one side of the door and your mind is racing because on the other side of that door, it could be no one. It could be four guys with four AK-47s. That, that door you're about to open could be booby trapped. So once you open it, boom, your legs are gone. So there's a thousand things you think about when you're the first guy, second guy, third guy, getting ready to go in a room and flood it. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. And that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than the normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, 
if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're going to die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane. Every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas. Good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military. Like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dial line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You got to accept that. And that's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior. But I'm also looking at the guys to my left and to my right, realizing that um, we're here together, man. And I have to... Uh, I have to be strong for them, and they got to be strong for me. A lot of people, either you like me or you don't, even in the SEAL teams, but when you get to that door or you get on that mission or you get in that op, all that shit's out the door, man. You know, you, you do it honestly. I mean, people say all the time in these movies and shit, you, you really out there fighting for that guy beside you, and you can't be a coward. Because you know what? And this is how I look at everything I do now in life, and this sums it up. I hated jumping out of airplanes. I hated shooting guns. I hated the job as a Navy SEAL. But I did it because I wanted to change myself. Everything I do, I'm not really comfortable doing. But if you choose to go that route, to go be a Navy SEAL, you might as well go be the hardest motherfucker in the world. Because if you're choosing to do something, you have two routes. You can go there and be a little a little weak person and get through barely and that's your reputation or you can go through the hardest guy you can possibly be and that's your reputation so my whole thing is if you're going to choose to open that fucking door in Iraq or Afghanistan open the motherfucker and go in hard because they're going to remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in so if you're going to open it and you made the mind to open it don't crack it open open the fucking door go in that's with life if you're, choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it. Because they're going to remember you as not attacking it. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me, but there's one thing you can't say about me. I didn't attack it. No matter what avenue I choose, I want to be the very best. Mm. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is did I leave everything inside of me out there. So attacking is not like, oh, I wanna win this or win that or be the best. The best is I'm, I'm, I'm running against myself and everything I do. And, and, that's, and that's what I attack. I attack myself. I'm always questioning myself. I'm always holding myself accountable. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing, and I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So I, th this mirror would always tell me, my, 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 my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note. And I would fix it. One movie I watched all the time was Rocky. Great choice. Rocky won. And I related to Rocky a lot because of uh, kind of, you know, one of the smart guys, just tried real hard. And the one scene that I related a lot of my life to, still to this day, was Rocky won round 14. And this is where I got taken souls from. If you look at round 14 of Rocky 1, Apollo is beating the shit out of Rocky. Rocky falls down in his corner. Mickey's saying, stay down, stay down. Rocky didn't hear a fucking soul. Apollo, after he knocked him down, turns around, hands in the air, like I finally knocked down this animal. 
Apollo doesn't know it, but Rocky's getting up. Apollo turns around the second Rocky gets up. And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he, Apollo looks at him with a look of like Rocky just took his soul. He, he, Apollo shakes his head, and Rocky has his gloves and emotions towards Apollo. Come on, motherfucker, I'm still here. So the image in my mind of a man was not one that had earrings, sagged his pants. I, I, I had this image in my head, and I was going to fulfill that. And I, I didn't do any trends. I stopped trending. I stopped being this guy who whatever was new, fuck it, that's not what I believe in. I'm doing this. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm going to be. And when I was out, I had time to reflect on all I'd accomplished. And that was the first time in my life where I sat back and said, wow. Because only I, I may be telling you some of the story, I know the exact truth of how brutal my life was and how I shouldn't be on this show today and how the mind and how beautiful it is. So what brings me joy and happiness is knowing how beautiful the mind is and I'm one of the few people that didn't read about it, didn't experience it through some, some drug. I got to experience the beauty of true fucking willpower True, fuck you, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, and I will succeed. Just me talking about that gives me a feeling, I know what I did, and I don't need to travel somewhere or to have this or have that, I have it all here in my mind. The beauty is remembering this young, dumb, what people call nigger, is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's for everlasting peace. I, do need, I, I could die right now on this show and I'll be happy, man. So that's, that's my happiness, is, is, is my reflection on the suffering of my journey, knowing I never quit, nor was I guided by anybody on this earth. I was guided by something much more powerful, and I listened, and I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. I first asked the kid, who are you? At the core of your soul. And if he can, can't answer that question, our conversation's over. Because I can't say shit to him. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know who you are, I can't tell you who you are. Hopefully, I can help people that believe that they're much less than what they truly are. Help them find greatness in themselves. And greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Mm. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You got to first see it. You got to first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I going to get there now? And that's when I come into play. But first, you got to create your own vision. And then it's not external. It's the, the vision created is inside of you. So until you create that, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody to you. We are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan, and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man. We all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it. And to find it because it's out there, but it's gonna take hard work, courage, self-discipline. It's gonna take all the non-cognitive skills, the, all the non-cognitive skills to be great. You know, smart is good, all this stuff is good. That's all cognitive. It's the non-cognitive skills that set you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about. Some people have been bullied. Some people are just stressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. 
and the world puts a lot of this shit in your mind. It's not just you. Yeah, you help it. And my whole thing is about I had to develop a mindset, a mindset that was indestructible. I had to armor plate my mind. And it's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. Can't hurt me just became a message. I, you know, I would say to myself, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we got a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, you know, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those fucked up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways, and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm still, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, wh what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're going to get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities. It is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says, whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. That's guidance. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you wanna be better, you realize you don't wanna be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. So I went to the bathroom and I had this weird haircut because I wanted attention. I was an attention getter. I went to an all white school pretty much. Um, some of the kids liked me, a lot of them didn't like me, whatever, didn't fucking matter. I was looking for something. So I would dress differently, crazy haircuts. And I went to the mirror and the reflection in it revealed a lot of bad things. A lot of things that I was hiding behind the saggy pants. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror, going like, God, dog, dude, you, gotta, you are something else, man. Like, you have created a character. I want to be at the cool guy table. And whatever I could do to, to, to get attention, I did. And it wasn't me. It wasn't who I was inside. But I was scared for anybody to know who I was inside. So in that accountability mirror, I call it, 
I got real with myself. I said, you have a third grade reading level, which is hard to admit when you're a junior in high school that you copied on every single thing you did because of fear they're gonna put me in a special school. We all know what special means. I'm gonna have a, a title on myself the rest of my life. And being cool, you don't have a title on yourself. So I started cheating. I was dumb. And people say, oh, you know, you had a learning disability. I had a learning disability, but I realized I was lazy. So um, I called myself out there. I called myself out every which way possible. I didn't call myself out, I was just honest. I was honest. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. And it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I gonna do today to change what I see in this mirror? What am I gonna do today? And a lot of it was, I stopped sitting with the cool guys. I actually tucked my shirt in and went to school looking like, hey man, this is how I'm gonna look. If you don't like it, so be it. I had to really wear this, this, this layer of skin I had to develop a really callous skin on me to, to take whatever you're going to call me, you're going to call me. Whatever I'm going to be, you know, I want a geek, but whoever I am, you're going to see me. You're going to see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just, just became raw. And when I became fat over the years because I fell back in the hole, I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's gonna change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we wanna hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw, it, it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror, but I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life where you say, okay, like if you're fat, you need to lose weight. It's patience. It's patience in this fact of accepting who you are right now. I'm fat. I don't like myself. Accepting the fact that if you lose three or four pounds, that's a huge accomplishment. You have to live in your own fucking world. You cannot judge yourself. That's why social media and all these things are horrible. You can't judge yourself off of the so-called competition that we have made up in our mind. The things that, how people look, how people act, how smart someone is. This is a race that you run completely alone. And you're all by yourself. I had tons of sticky notes all over my mirror. It wasn't like, be better than John or be as fast as whoever. Okay, David, yesterday you did this. Today, our next goal for the week is this. So I had a year goal weekly goals, daily goals, hourly goals. And the big goal was I lied a lot growing up. I wanted to be accepted. One goal was let's go one day without lying. A lot of folks talk so much shit about, hey, I'm gonna change your life. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Are you accountable for what you're doing? Are you accountable? And I mean to the T for what you're saying. I am. And that's where it started. It started with that total, total accountability of let's not lie today. Let's tell people the truth about who you are. And when you can get on and tell someone like I'm doing right now exactly how fucked up you are, that's the goal in life. To put your life on a billboard on the busiest road in the busiest highway in the world and say, this is how fucked up I used to be. Take it or leave it. When you really sit back at your life and you are in that dark room and you're looking at where you started from and you tell yourself, God, dog, man, my, my mom is this way. My soon stepdad got murdered. My dad beat the shit out of me. I can't read and write to save my fucking soul. I've lied about it to everybody. I've cheated on all these tests. My God, man. And then you put a goal in your mind. How are you gonna feel, man, when you accomplish this goal coming from that shit? Coming from the fucking hell you came from? A lot of people start from a good starting point. They have a good foundation. What if you can surpass all of these motherfuckers? What if everybody who was fucking way up here started up here and you had, you started with no legs. You had to grow fucking legs to even start walking and then crawling and then running 
And then you start passing people with all this given to them. I had to use all this negative shit that was making me weak and horrible as a person. I had to use this as the power that now fueled me. I had to flip it on its head and say, hold up. This might be exactly what I need. The darkness is exactly what I need. It's how you look at your situation. And I was looking at it all fucked up. Accepting. You have to first accept it before you can fix it. A lot of people walk around, oh man, I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not. You have to accept what you're not. You have to, and people don't want to do that. That's the only way you can fix it. You have to accept it first before you can go on the journey. A lot of folks never even start the journey, man. They never start the journey because they live in this fake life that who they want to be, they act like they are, but they're not because they haven't fixed all this stuff yet. You got to fix this first before we can start our journey in life. So that's why I have them make this list. You fix these problems, now your journey can begin because you no longer care about how people are judging you. When, when you care more about how someone's judging you, you're going to stay right there. I want to be smarter. For me, that was my thing. I have to, I have to become more intelligent. I have such a severe learning disability, I, mean, I can't retain shit. I had to now get that one thing and then strategize in that one problem. How can I do this? I'm not going to learn like you. I'm not going to learn like anybody else. How am I going to figure this out? So I then figured out, okay, where are my strengths here? Where are my weaknesses in learning? All right, man, how am I going to do this? And I figured out a way to do it by just strategizing. So how I learn to this day, if I have a big manual to study, I will have to get a bunch of spiral notebooks from the, from the daggone store. And each page, I have to write each page out maybe 10 times. So there was a thousand page dive manual that I got 18 months before I went to dive school. Most people, I'm not smart, I'm gonna go see if I can pass this test. I realized, hang on a second, I'm not smart. How can I get past this? How can I get through this obstacle? I need to get, I need to acquire this book 18 months in advance because it could take me 18 months to write down each page over and over again to then put it to memory. So when the question came up, I had written that question so many times down in that, in, on, you know, on paper that I can recall, okay, page 71 was where I remember seeing this and I can recall it that way. And that's how I did it. So you got to strategize on each problem you have in life. Slowly break down that problem. Don't think about all the problems you have, just one at a time. And before you know it, you fix all these problems, but you cannot focus on all of them just on the one thing at a time. Mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're all trying to find an easy way out. And we're judging ourselves. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre. But I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenge and feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and say, hey, put your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, I man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man. We'll get a pizza and shit, watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your fucking shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that. They get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know, I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the fucking mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. I'm good, so you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once you reach the top of the mountain, you gotta build a fucking another one. That's mediocrity. 
There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume, but they're one-timers, man. They hit, they hit a one-time deal, they busted it open, got a lot of money, but they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you fucking doing today, tomorrow, the next fucking day? That's why I don't listen to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I listen to a motherfucker who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm fucking tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I gotta do the fucking shit again, man. Whatever the shit is that made me fucking nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt, there's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. Like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that fucking race. That 19 hours, I found, wow, there's a whole nother fucking world out here that I've never even saw, but the world's in your mind. And that's what all that mediocrity is about. Mediocrity is contagious. Civilized is something where people, um, it's, a, it's, it's a comfortable world. A lot of us say, you know, like for instance, I see these athletes right now who retire, you know, I'm 38, you know, I'm 39. I did 20 years at the top of my game and I'm chilling out now. You see them a year later and how they look. What the hell just happened to you, dude? What the hell? You're one of the greatest athletes of all time. Kids looked up to you. Women, men of all ages looked up to you. And they hit the pinnacle where it's time to retire and their mind says, I'm civilized. The worst thing that could ever happen to any human being is they become civilized. It's that total accountability. Like even when you retire, there's a motherfucker looking at me and judging me right now, man. I'm, I was the baddest person to ever live. It doesn't go away, man. You gotta wake up, even though you retired, you never retired. You're setting the example every single day of your life. And being civilized feels so good. I'm sorry, man. Once you get to the top, you may retire, but you ain't never coming back home, man. Cause now you're judged. People see you falling off. You wanna be that guy who knows I may be retired from the sport or forever I did, but I'll be damned if you ever see me looking like shit, feeling like shit, not arriving. People, I've arrived. I've arrived mentality. You're always setting the example. Civilization feels so good. These comfortable feelings are what people want. They want retirement. They want that, they need that. They, it's, a, it's a yearning feeling. I want it too. People love putting a label on me about, my God, man, you're just wired different. I'm not fucking wired different, dude. I'm thinking right now, after I got past my stuttering thing, now I'm on a roll, I'm good now. You know what I'm thinking about right now? I gotta fucking wake up tomorrow and do the same shit again. I gotta leave this fucking interview and go stretch out for two and a half hours. I hate that shit. <laughs> but guess what it does though? I'm constantly callousing over my victim's mentality that I once had growing up. Every day you have to do this shit. Because why? When you stop doing it, you don't just maintain it. If you stop shooting a gun, you're not gonna be a great shot if you pick a gun up a year from now. The only way to keep from getting rusty is to constantly owe that motherfucking machine. The machine is this. You gotta keep challenging it every day. What do people come up to you and ask you the most? How do I do it? How am I able to do what I do on a daily basis? You know, how do I fight the demons? Because they hear me speak and I'm very raw and real. How do you fight my insecurities, all these things? And uh, I, they're there every day. They're there every day. Like you said, I'm in search for a feeling. I'm not in search for a trophy. I'm not in search for love. I'm not in search for more followers on Instagram or social media. When I started this journey, years ago and I realized that I'm going to be somebody and I'm searching for a feeling, a feeling of true victory for myself. 
and only myself. The second I shut out the whole world and realize that one thing, that I am in this world alone. I'm fighting this race by myself. Yeah, I'm all about people, I'm all about team, I'm all about that shit, but I'm really all about right now and in my life, just like you said, no one knows the real truth about me, how hard I really go. I don't care if anybody knows. I don't want anybody to know. I'm an introvert, I live an introverted life, and I love that about me. It, that right there is my fuel, is I know that there's really no one out there grinding like me. And if they are, so be it. If I know about you, I'll make sure that I up my game. <laughs> That's what the mentality is all about. My whole thing is a mentality thing. Like I told you the last time I was on the show, I viewed myself as the weakest person on the planet Earth. My goal in life was to in my mind, believe I'm the hardest man alive. And that's why the whole thing is, can't hurt me. That's what it's about. It's about whatever you think you are, you have to make that dream a reality. But that's where the hard part is, is making that dream reality. That's where the hard work comes. That's where people know, how do you keep grinding every day? You have to make those insecurities, those fears. Like when I was 300 pounds, I didn't have any drive. I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. What kind of stupid shit is that, 300 pounds? It wasn't like a drive to go be a Navy SEAL. I was an insecure, lying kid, afraid. I had to look in my insecurities and in my fear and find drive in that. We're all looking for passion. Passion's all around you. You have a whole, a whole fucking stack of it all around you. It's your insecurities, all that shit. You gotta dive deep in that shit. All the, it's, it's all in there. All the energy and fuel you need is right in yourself. It's all there. You got a lot of stuff to do to overcome. And you know, that's where I found it. I found it right there in my own insecurities. I found drive in my own insecurities. And that's, that's the most powerful thing in the world. When you can find drive in your own doubt, fear, insecurities, you become very unstoppable. Who is sitting here right now today? This is the real me, obviously. But um, I'm gonna go kind of, I'm, I'm a very philosophical person. And I'm gonna go there with you real quick. I believe in a higher power. Don't know the name, don't know where it's coming from, don't know anything like that. But I believe that this power, and visualize me real quick. Let's say it's a man up there or a woman, whatever and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins, born February 17, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly what you're fucking supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be. You die, you go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay, just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says, you were supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, Doug, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why, because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, we don't work. We just, whatever, it's going to magically happen for us. No. I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the fucking chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I want to get up there and say, him, look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't fucking see this. <laughs> I didn't fucking see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this fucking world and however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me, to look at me and say, I did not fucking know. I, I had you at 185, I had you at this, but all this other shit, I was riding as you were living it. I want to, I want to find more. All I can. And in that fucking sack of shit, you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, 
I can find anything. You can live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're going to get there and you might see a chart. And that chart may tell you who the fuck you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Man, I could have lived a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more. If I just would have went in that shit and realized I had so much more. But fear and the 40% and living here versus living here, being afraid, stop me. So that's, I, I'm a big guy in visualizing. I'm a, I'm a big guy in making a world, it may not exist. To me, it does. To me, it does. And I'm, I'm overpowering myself every day. And you gotta find tools to do that. That's the tool that I use. So that's what it's all about. The most important conversation you will ever have in your fucking life is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you're gonna act on it. Whether you're good or bad, you have to, that's why the whole thing about this book I have, it's about you. It is about you. It's strictly about you finding who you are. So many people die, live a hundred years, never fucking know who they are. Never know who they are. You have to look in that mirror and know this, there's so much more in here, man. Because I can literally right now be a 300 pound guy spraying for cockroaches still to this day. If I did not look in that mirror and say, there, there has to be more to this. This can't be it. And then willing to go into it, dive deep into it, and give all I have to find it. When you were given the VFW award recently, and you were listening to people that had impacted you, and you got to your mom, you couldn't even speak. Yeah, uh, it almost chokes me up now. Um, so I got the VFW award for the, uh, for the um, Americanism award for military service and giving back. I'm as human as human can be. That's why what you see is what you get. Um, at that moment when I was giving my speech, and I thanked my uncle for being there, and I got to my mom, it wasn't just about her. It was, I, I, I know what she went through, I know what I went through, and we got knocked down so much. I had a moment in front of all these great American heroes where I had a chance, it was like so fast, it went through me like, like lightning of, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm getting the award like this. That, that kid who was in the fetal position, the majority of his life, and so much the fact that my body, my hip flexors are tight to this day, that even though I was standing erect, my mind was in the fetal position. And when I looked out amongst all those people, it was a sense of pride that <clears throat> I can't even, I can't even explain. It's the moments of three hell weeks. It's the moments of in that room by myself studying for hours and hours and hours trying to catch up with all the kids who were above me. <clears throat> It's just those moments, like the real raw moments of life that was like, boom, hit me and we're gone. But I was like, I did that, I overcame that shit. You know, it's like, it's this power behind all that shit. And that's the feeling I was looking for in my life. I found it, it wasn't money, it wasn't fame, it wasn't awards, it, it was that feeling I have right now. The feeling of, I'm about to break down, but it's not of like, Oh my God, I'm upset. It's like I worked myself so hard that I turned a person this fucked up into this motherfucker right here. Not off of reading a fucking book off a theorist, off of going to work on myself and saying, I don't know how to do this, but I know that to get over there to that fucking side, I gotta grind myself into a fucking fine powder 
And I did it. I did it off a of sure will. And very few people will know how that feels. Very few. I love that more than you can possibly know. Before I ask my last question, tell these guys where they can find the book. So the book right now is called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And it's on Amazon right now. It's a raw, real book. It's not a five-step book. It's a real book about developing habits on how to overcome yourself. And I believe all of us humans have an equation like, you know, pi is 3.14. That's how you solve for that equation. Every human being has a different equation. And there's not like some cookie cutter book of, hey, read this book and you'll be fixed. No, you gotta figure out your own personal equation. And once you figure out that equation, you now become a mathematical fucking genius about yourself. And that's what this book does. It makes you a fucking genius about who the fuck you are. And then from there, once you realize 3.14 is pi, you can solve any fucking equation in the world. That's what it's about. The impact I want to have in the world is for everybody to be able to face who they are. I want to have that kind of impact where you can go on TV. You can put your life on a billboard. You're not ashamed of who the fuck you are. You're not ashamed of what life made you, what you helped life make you. All that shit, all that bad shit that's now in this big pot that's stirring, you're no longer ashamed of it. You realize we're all fucked up. Stop judging yourself against other fucked up people who have hidden it better than you. It's all they've done. They've mastered shit better than you have, and now they're flipping it back on you and saying you're fucked up. I want you to realize that this world, life, is one big head game. And once you learn to play the motherfucking head game, it's no longer a game anymore at all. You can start living your life. <laughs>